We're diving into traits for our Dwarven Wizard. Let's make sure his arrogance is well earned. Hello and welcome to The Saving Throw Show, the show designed to get you up and running in RPGs quickly. My name is Dom Zook. This episode is brought to you by Hero Forge. More on them later. Last episode, we explored character concepts in Pathfinder for Savage Worlds, starting with Ancestry and then diving into one of my favorite parts of the game system, Hindrances. We started building a dwarf wizard and decided he would be arrogant, a major hindrance, and then chose Stubborn and Mean as two minor hindrances. He's super focused on proving himself to others. In this episode, we're going to make sure he can follow through on that arrogance. This will be a favorite for those of us who love numbers and a surprising relief for those who don't want to get caught up in the nitty gritty of crunchy systems. Traits include attributes, skills, and derived statistics, and basically tell us what our dwarf can do well. Let's start with attributes. Attributes are the main five flavors of actions. Agility, smarts, spirit, strength, and vigor. Skills and passive effects are dictated by their connected attribute. All characters begin with a d4 in each attribute, since all characters are basically capable of doing a little of everything. And for a little perspective, a die type of d6 is considered average for adult humans. For our min-maxers, an attribute can never be raised above a d12 at character creation unless their ancestry or class states otherwise. This can be a little frustrating for power gamers, but it also means that the GM's monsters have those limits too. And Savage Worlds is especially fun because those dice rolls can really add up, even from a d4. During character creation, you essentially have five character points to increase your attributes. I know one of the most important attributes for my wizard will be smarts because it's tied to spellcasting, but perhaps equally important is that it's tied to academics and occult knowledge, all necessary for a growing wizard. He knows what he's doing and you can't tell him otherwise. Let's be bold and make that a D8 right away. One of the great aspects of the Ancestry system, if you remember the last episode, is that dwarves automatically get a little boost to their vigor, so he's already at a D6 there. That's fairly survivable for a novice character. I imagine he also has average dwarven strength, let's boost that to a D6 to match. I'm left with d4s and agility and spirit right now, so this is the only point where I'll need to make a decision. If your table is a storytelling table and you don't have to worry as much about combat, you might leave agility at a d4. However, since we can see that agility governs athletics and fighting, which in turn dictate pace and parry, we'll get to those soon, I'm going to make sure my agility is at a d6. I want to be able to dodge or run away when needed. I'll go ahead and put my spirit at a d6 as well because I can already see a skill under spirit that I want to use. In Savage Pathfinder, you get 12 points to spend on racing skills. Apart from that, all characters begin with a d4 and 5 core skills. Athletics, Stealth, Common Knowledge, Notice, and Persuasion. Basically, Savage Worlds assumes most people move around a little every day, they snuck around when they were kids, gained some common information, maybe looked for lost keys or whatnot, and probably tried to convince others to do something. Everyone gets a d4 because we've all practiced those skills before. My dwarf has a persuasion of d4, but he has that minus one modifier due to his mean hindrance. Perfect. Now, I know... When you're looking at this, that it's going to be really tempting to put all of your skill points into boating, but you really should <laughs> spread them out a little. Seriously though, don't, don't get too caught up in this unless you really enjoy numbers. You can try anything untrained, within reason and the GM's approval of course, by rolling a d4 minus 2. Untrained skills can still get lucky rolls, so don't worry about missing out. But put points in skills that seem necessary. Put most of them in what speaks to your character concept, into what you imagine your character has practiced. Right off the bat, I'm going to put two points into fighting and make it a d6. That's my uh, necessary skill that I'm not specifically excited about for this character, but I know Perry is derived from fighting and I want him to be able to dodge. The skills I'm really looking forward to using are spellcasting, obviously. Let's make that a d8. A cult? Well, that would be a d6 and academics a d6. For Savage Worlds veterans, research has been rolled into academics, so we're getting everything covered here. That leaves me with three more points. 
I'm going to put one into notice and raise it to a d6. Finally, uh, under spirit, I was already looking at intimidation for my slightly mean dwarf. It's definitely needed. One point will move him from untrained to a standard d4, and one more point will bump it to a d6. His towering intellect intimidates everyone, and he's happy to point it out. We're almost done. But before we discuss final numbers, I want to talk a little bit about this episode's sponsor, HeroForge. HeroForge is the internet's home for customizing and 3D printing tabletop miniatures and statuettes. Design your character from the ground up and see it in full 3D, and finally have a miniature that captures your vision. With color printing available and an easy, intuitive system of creation, HeroForge is the gold standard for custom miniatures. Go to HeroForge.com today and start building. And now, back to Savage Pathfinder. I've already mentioned derived statistics a little, knowing that I don't want my dwarf to get squished the moment he steps across the threshold. Everything else trickles down to reveal pace, parry, and toughness, so you really don't have to do anything aside from a little, a very little, I promise, math. If you're using a character builder, it's probably done the work for you. Pace dictates how fast your character can move when your GM brings out the battle map, or even when you're using theater of the mind. Standard pace, just walking, is six. This means uh, six tabletop inches on a battle map, often six squares if it's a map with a grid. For theater of the mind, each inch is two yards or six feet, so standard pace means a distance of 12 yards or 36 feet, not quite the full length of a semi-trailer. There are easy game mechanics for running and moving further, but we're not concerned about that during creation. For character creation, all we need to know is that standard pace is 6, but dwarves have their pace reduced by 1 to balance out the special bonuses that come from Ancestry, so my dwarf has a pace of 5. Folks coming from D&D or Pathfinder may be curious how AC or armor class fits into Savage Worlds. For all intents and purposes, AC is handled by two derived stats, parry and toughness. Parry is the number a foe will have to match in order to strike the character in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Parry is calculated as 2 plus half the fighting die type. If you don't put anything in fighting, the character only has a parry of 2, which is one of the few places where your base number can get you into trouble. You see why I was thinking about it. Here I have a fighting of d6, so that will be 2 plus 3 for a total parry of 5. Armor and gear and some edges can boost that number in the future, but a 5 is a great novice character starting point. While parry decides whether or not your character will be hit in close combat, toughness dictates the amount of damage you take regardless of the kind of hit. Toughness uses a similar calculation to parry. Where parry is 2 plus half the fighting die, toughness is 2 plus half the hero's vigor, plus armor. Without armor, my dwarf's vigor is a d6, so that's 2 plus 3 for a total toughness of 5. I fives across the board, but remember, all of these can get boosted by spells, objects, and armor, and even some edges. He's in good shape to start adventuring. Join me next time as I tackle edges, background, and gear. Thanks for watching. If this helped you, please consider liking and sharing, and check out the Saving Throw Coffee to support more content like this. If you have specific questions or have a request, please check out our Discord. What do you think are the most overlooked skills? Voting is certainly a fan favorite. Are you building a character along with me? Feel free to share it in the comments, guys, I'd love to see your builds. Till next time, I'm Dom Zook, let's dungeon.